Texans fans, welcome into Texans Today. I am Will Scott. On today's show, we're talking about some winners and losers to emerge from the Texans after the 2023 NFL Draft. Obviously, a huge draft for the Texans. Some people came out of it as winners, some not so much. We'll break down those names on today's show. We're almost to our next milestone here on Texans Today. Need about 100 more subscribers to reach 3,000 YouTube subscribers and the more content that you get depends on how many subscribers that we have. So try to try to get to 3,000 subscribers here in the next couple of days. Go down and subscribe to the channel right now. Let's talk about some winners and losers from the Texans draft. I thought the Texans were a clear winner from this draft, but a clear loser uh, was Davis Mills. And I think Davis was kind of thinking in the days leading up to the draft when he was when he was hearing all the rumors about, man, the Texans might pass on a quarterback in the first round. He was probably thinking he was going to have a good shot to be the starter this year. And then he hears C.J. Stroud's uh, name get called, and that is definitely the new QB1 here for the Texans. Davis Mills is now QB2. Case Keenum, who they signed in free agency from the Bills, also on this roster, you bring Case Keenum back, and then you have Perry is the fourth string, maybe practice squad quarterback. Uh, we'll see what happens in camp. Uh, but those are your top three QBs right now. Davis Mills no longer QB1. He is clearly a loser, probably the biggest loser from the Texans draft. Who do you think is the biggest loser from the Texans draft? Go down in the comments section and let me know. For me, it's got to be Davis Mills. I mean, what kind of made what kind of made it even worse for him is again, there was a lot of talk that the Texans were not going to take a quarterback, maybe run it back with Mills. That ends up not being the case. They take CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud is now QB one on this football team. I think another big winner is D'Amico. I think another big winner, I should say, in addition to just the Texans uh, fan base in general, is uh, D'Amico Ryan's and. I say that because it's pretty clear that D'Amico had a big say in the way this draft went. I think he really wanted Will Anderson, so much so the Texans uh, sacrificed a lot to go up and get Will Anderson, who is a complete stud at D'Amico's alma mater, Alabama, over 200 tackles in his career, 34 and a half sacks in Anderson's career. And I mentioned that Alabama connection here with D'Amico. They drafted Henry Toto as well in the fifth round. So I think D'Amico Ryans had a really big say in how this draft went for the Texans. I know that he probably had a lot to do with this pick as well, taking Toto in the fifth round. D'Amico's an Alabama linebacker. They take the Alabama linebacker, Toto, who, in my opinion, was one of the biggest steals in this entire draft, 15 and a half tackles for loss last season at Bama. So when I'm looking at this draft across the board from top to bottom, I think D'Amico had a lot to do with it. That's why he is a winner, and the defense definitely got a lot better, uh, which is another reason D'Amico is a winner. A loser, I think, is Noah Brown. I thought he was wide receiver four coming into this draft. Now I think he might be wide receiver six. Taking a look at the updated depth chart here. Uh, Nico Collins, probably your top wide receiver right now. You sign Robert Woods in free agency, much like Noah Brown. John Mechie's going to be back. Thank God he's gotten healthy. Uh, Tank Dell, you draft him. Xavier Hutchinson, you draft him. So I think Noah Brown right now might be the fifth or sixth wide receiver on this roster. I expect Tank Dell to get more targets than Brown next season. And I like Brown. I thought he was an underrated signing in for agency. But Xavier Hutchinson as well has a lot of talent, was an All-American. That was a steal in the sixth round. Noah Brown goes from being your clear number four wide receiver to maybe your sixth wide receiver on this team. I still think he makes the team, but I don't know how involved he's going to be next year. A winner, meanwhile, is Mike Boone. And I thought the Texans might draft a running back. Talked about Deuce Vaughn a lot during the draft process. They did not draft a running back. So when you look at this running back situation, Mike Boone, I think, is your third running back behind Damian Pierce and Devin Singletary. So if they would have taken a running back, I don't know if Boone would have been a slam dunk lock to make this team. Uh, but now I think he is. I do expect Mike Boone to make Mike Boone to make this team as the third running back here. Again, you bring him over uh, from the Denver Broncos in free agency, much like Andrew Beck, your fullback. Uh, so I expect Mike Boone to make this team as the third running back if we want to go uh, to our next batch here of winners and losers from the Texans 2023 draft. And we will begin with Scott Questenberry, 
uh, who was a clear loser because the Texans didn't just draft one center. Uh, they drafted two. So Questenberry goes from being your starting center to this is my this might sound crazy. I don't know if he's a lock to make the team right now. I don't expect them to carry three centers. You drafted Juice Scruggs in the second round. I think he's your new starting center. You also get Jared Patterson, who is a great value pick later on in the sixth round, who might be the backup center to Juice Scruggs or might compete with Juice Scruggs for that starting job. So Questenberry came into this draft as the Texan starting center. He signed a one-year deal with Houston. I do not think he is a lock to make this football team after this draft, the Texans took two centers in this draft. I even said before the draft I wouldn't rule out the Texans taking two centers because he got to get that position right, and they did. The Texans, though, did not take a tight end, which is why I think Brevin Jordan is a winner from this draft. Right now, he is on the roster bubble if the Texans had drafted a tight end. I'm not sure if uh, Jordan would have uh, made this roster, so I do think he is a winner from this draft. When you're talking about winners that are currently on the team, you got to look at positions that were not addressed. Tight end, they did not take a tight end in this draft. That means uh, Jordan is a winner. Another winner is Nick Casario. Clap it up for Nick, man. I mean, those those rumors before the draft that, oh, this might be his last draft. Oh, he might get fired. I mean, give me a break. It was all fake news BS. Uh, but Nick Casario uh, proved himself in this draft, and he's drafted well in the past. He had a great free agency. Uh, but this draft, Nick Casario really solidified himself, in my opinion at least, as a top-tier general manager in this league. And obviously these draft picks, we got to see how they do. But man, just Nick Casario, uh, his boldness and his aggressiveness in this draft, going up from 12 to 3, having back-to-back -back picks number 2 and 3, taking a franchise quarterback in C.J. Stroud, taking the best player in the draft in Will Anderson, and then having a bunch of steals later on. Henry Toto, Tank Dell, uh, Jared Patterson. Uh, you have Xavier Hutchinson, the All-American from Iowa State that you got in the sixth round. Nick Casario, an uh, unbelievable job by him in this draft, and I hope he is the Texans GM for a long time if these draft picks pan out the way I think they will. What is your confidence level in Nick Casario? Scale it 1 to 10. You know, it's funny, when, when the Texans hired Nick, I wasn't crazy about the hire because I was tired of the Texans, you know, being affiliated with the New England Patriots and Houston being called uh, Patriot South and all this. And I, I wasn't crazy about the hire. But looking back, I thought, I think it's a good hire. I mean, I think Nick has the Texans moving in the right direction, gets a lot of capital in that Deshaun Watson trade, and he has certainly made the most of it. So I've been happy with the job that Nick Casario has done. But go down in the comments section. Tell me your thoughts on Casario. Last but not least, Texans fans are a winner from this 2023 draft. Houston fans have been very patient. They have seen a losing football team the last several years, and they have been a consistent loser for the past 20 years since the Texans uh, were installed. So Texans fans have been patient. Um, I, I think Texans fans should be very happy. Uh, with this draft and should be very happy with the direction of this organization. It feels like for the first time in a long time, the Texans are doing something right. They hired Amico Ryans. They kill it for agency. They kill it in the draft. Texans fans, you should be very excited about the, uh, the direction this franchise is going, and that's the first time in a while uh, that I've been able to say that. Who is the biggest winner from the Texans 2023 draft? Go down in the comments section and let me know. And you, you can type Texans fans. You can, you can shout out yourselves down in the comments section. YouTube.com slash Texans TV. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Houston Texans news and rumors.